Yes! There we go. Now then, the journey of the Virgin Walker shall continue. Hey, ya! Oh shit. Okay. Ah. Hot keys. Right then, uh, let me first go to my Twitch app, and, uh, yep, so I can see my screen on my phone, boop, ah, lovely, uh, is it working, there we go, ah, yes, there we go, oh, it appears to be laggy, oh, there we go, now it's not, alright, let us continue! The journey of the Virgin Walker shall progress in the story. <clears throat> after punching my alarm clock, I wake up after the first sound of my alarm and hop out of my bed. Today is the interview. As I get dressed, I practice my speech in my head. Breakfast goes by in a blur as I try to anticipate what questions they will ask me. Before long, I reach the campus. As of in a daze, I go to class and take a seat by the window. Good morning, class. I hope you are all prepared for the pop quiz. Oh boy. Uh, is, is nobody gonna... Okay, usually there's supposed to be a voice there, but okay. Pop quiz? I didn't hear about a pop quiz. You are absolutely right. That is why, young man, it is called a pop quiz. The only person who is amused by that is the professor. He hands one page to out to each student, and as soon as I am, and soon I am staring at a sheet of questions. What is the difference between overheating a core and draining a core? Hmm. Let's see. Overheating occurs when the core is utilized too much in a short span of time, while draining a core is when the total energy available is depleted. Draining occurs when the core is utilized. Okay, no. By the power of my virginity. And my instinct, I shall pick this one, because this seems to be the most sense. Yes, that sounds about right. I spend t some time completing the rest of the questions. Her, her. With my quiz completed, I hand it over to the front of at the front of the class. What is with the voices? Okay. Thank you. I nod and return to my seat. The professor waits for the rest of the class to finish before beginning the lesson. That is all for today. Have a good afternoon. As soon as class is dismissed, I rush out of the building. Hurrah! Virgin, virginity away! As I shout down the corridor. I'm not sure why I was in such a hurry. I still have a few hours before I need to meet Yuna. I wonder what I should do to pass the time. Hmm. Hmm. Haha, <laughs> no. Hmm. Hmm. Let's hang out with my buddy show. Maybe show's down to hang for a bit. I call him, but the phone rings for a while before it connects. Hey, show! Hello, you have reached the 1 800 get swole. How may I help you today? I am looking for show. Who is this? Where is show? Show's taking care of business in the bathroom, so you might take a while. What? Dot dot dot. I hear movement on the line. <laughs> hey, sorry about that. One of the guys picked up my phone while I was in the bathroom. It's okay. Do you have a class right now? Nope. Let's do something then. Yeah. You still on campus? Indeed. You should come over and meet the brosis. Sure, I shall be there in a few. Show opens the door and I am assaulted by the stench of cheap Sapero. Welcome to Mikasa. Your casa smells like beer and sweat. That, my friend, is the scent of men. Huh. I never do. I, I guess having a sister means I never got this memo. Show grins. Just stick with me and we'll have you growing in no time. I follow Show through the house when suddenly a, a ball flies at my face. Whoa, watch out. Oh shit! Huh. 
By the power of my virgin instinct, my arm shoots out, and I catch the ball midair. Dude, that was sick. Dude. <laughs> okay. A couple of a couple of shows. Doormates run up to me. Good ref <clears throat> good reflexes, man. Wait, so isn't this guy the pilot on your team? Yep, that's right. Bruh. Bro. Bro. We watched the qualifiers. You were awesome. The way you took down those two kids with your bare fist was badass. Okay, that, that sounded completely different, but... Yeah. Yes, I had it in the bag. Indeed. As I one v 2 those two guys. Yes. I know, I was pretty awesome, wasn't I? When I saw my teammates go down, I knew it was up to me. The power of my gear and virginity powered up like a boss and I just cleaned the house. Up high, dude! I have- I high five the guy. Yeah! We continue down the hall towards Sho's room, leaving his brosters back to their game of indoor football. Everywhere I turn, there's at least an empty beer bottle. The trash cans are spilling with trash, and there are takeout boxes left in random areas. Quite the place you got here. You like it? It feels really genuine, doesn't it? Perhaps a little too genuine. I guess it can be kind of overwhelming. I really do like it here, though. Shaw opens the door to his room, and I'm relieved by how clean it is. There are a few clothes and books scattered about the room, but nothing on the floor. His room is decorated with posters and of scantily clad action movie hero heroines and very video game warriors. There is a huge TV facing his bed, and ha he has mul a multitude of gaming platforms set up around it. I take a seat on his bed while Shaw sits at his desk. Why do you like you so much, if I may ask? I'm surrounded by my brothers. What's not to like? You have any real bros? Yeah, just one. He's older. How much older? Does he go to age two? No, he's way older. Well, do you miss him? Show shrugs. I suppose I do, but not so much in a brotherly way. He was more of a father to me than my father was. He's currently working overseas, though. Huh. Well, does he visit often? Do you get to see him much? Um, not really. We usually only see him once a year. I guess living so far away can make visiting quite difficult. Show not. He doesn't seem to be bothered by it. Anyway, enough about my family. Since you're here, how about a few matches? Show tosses me a controller. You're on. By the power of my virginity and... By the power of my virginity, I shall destroy you. In video games! I kick Sho's ass at video games until he has time to leave for class. Yuna is already waiting for me at the library. A tablet with the SBA logo is clutched in her hand. She smiles and breathes a sign of relief when she sees me. Oh good, you're still wearing your uniform. I forgot to tell you yesterday to wear it, and remembered too late to text you. Oh. Well, I was quite preoccupied on what I would say today that I forgot to think about, well, what I'd wear. Ah, no worries. I hope my voice sounds more confident than I feel. Yuna notices the waver in my voice. She places a hand on my shoulder. The heat of her hand soothes my nerves, and I relax a bit. Okay, well, are you ready to go? Yeah! She starts up. She starts towards the bus stop when I stop her. I believe I can drive us on my virgin runner. Her cheeks turn pink, but she grins widely. I'm immediately reminded of how her face lit up at the last time she saw my bike. That would be great. I lead her to my virgin runner, and we both hop on with ease. Once she settled in, we sped off. Yuna directs me to where to go, and eventually takes me to a park in front of an impressive building. It is narrow, but shoots straight up into the sky, cutting through the clouds. As we walk in, a perky receptionist greets us from behind her desk. Welcome to WorkTap Corporation. How may I help you? Yuna steps forward. I'm Yuna Misaki from Ace Academy SBA. We have an appointment with 
Mr. Takeda. The receptionist smiles and gestures to the empty chairs. Of course. If you're pleased to see, he'll be with you shortly. As soon as we take our seats, the receptionist types types a rapid sequence into her computer, then drags the documents from her monitor to onto her ta uh, onto her tablet and disappears into the hall in the back. I glance at Yuna. She meticul she's meticulously going over her notes. Are you nervous? She thinks for a minute. Not as much as I thought I'd be. Are you? Nobody can res- Haha! <laughs> By the power of my virginity, nobody can resist these pearly whites! Haha! <laughs> I have my secret weapon, my virginity! What's that? I flash her a smile. One look at me, and she'll be hooked. We're meeting with the man. Fuck! <laughs> I freeze as I run the scenario in my head. Uh, it could still work. Yuna chuckles. The receptionist comes back and gestures for us to follow her. Her ponytail bounces behind her as she br walks briskly down the hall and directs us into a spacious office. A portly older man sits behind an old-fashioned mahogany desk. His jaw, his jowl wiggles as he offers us seats when we both take, which we both take. The walls are painted white, but one wall has a translucent sheen with Yuno's SBA submission pocket projected on it. His chair squeaks in protest as he leans forward to greet us. Miss Misaki, it's a pleasure to see you again. Thank you for agreeing to meet with us, Mr. Takeda. I'd like to introduce my associate. Greetings, I am Gervin Enderv. It is a pleasure to meet you. He nods in acknowledgement while Yuna continues. He is here to represent his team at Ace Academy. And you are in need of a sponsor. That is correct, sir. He waves a hand towards the wall and shuffles the data on there. As you can see, Miss Misaki did a detailed job of describing you and your team in your application. But I'd like to hear from you. Tell me about yourself. I've always had quite an interest in gear. I grew up in the world of gears and knew from an early age that I wished to be a pilot. While a student at CANY, I began my program in piloting and earned top marks in all of my classes. I recently transferred and tested into the pilot program at Ace Academy, where I'm pursuing my degree in piloting. As a transfer student, that's not an easy program to test into. He sounds impressed. I dab. <laughs> Out of all your other options, why did you choose Warp Tech Corporation? You're the best around. It was quite an easy decision. Warp Tech Corporation sets the standard for gear weaponry. I read about your latest announcements of the advancement in particle technology. Same output on beam weaponry while reducing core usage by 15%. None of your competitors have made a breakthrough like that yet. There has also been some controversy over that release. Some are saying using your the new technology will affect the longevity of a weapon, but there's no proof of that yet. I prefer to see the evidence than believe the rumors. He nods. It's refreshing to see a young person keeping up to date with the latest releases. I dab once more after that successful remark. I think I detect a hint of approval in his voice as I dab once more in front of him. <laughs> corporation choose you. In other words, what sets you apart from the competition? <laughs> My team is half women. Ah yes, I am international. As someone who grew up overseas, I bring a new point of view to my Japanese teammates. If you invest in us, you'll be invested in yeah, yeah, oh God. <clears throat> you'll be investing in international alliances. But could it the same be said for any other international pilot studying at Ace? Oh shit. Uh and there is, of course, the potential backlash if we support an international oh, pilot shit. Full team of domestic oh. pilots. Oh fuck. Perhaps that wasn't the best angle to use. Well, I think I've heard enough for now. Miss Misaki, do you have a copy of your team's qualifier transcripts? I do not adapt to that. Anyway. Yes, of course. Uh, well, uh, it was only one fuck up. Haha. <laughs> she flips on her tablet and flicks a document onto the, the projected wall. 
The interview seems to be going well. I glance at Yuna, who smiles encouragingly at me. Mr. Takedar takes a quick glance at the file and frowns. Your team is only ranked 21. Yes, sir. He sighs and turns off the projection. You seem generally passionate about your team and your studies. And perhaps if the circumstances were different, we would consider your candidacy. Unfortunately, Warp Tech only accepts teams who are ranked within the top 10 from Ace Academy. Son of a bitch! I slam the desk immediately. <laughs> As I'm processing the rejection, Yuna protests herself on- uh, protests on my behalf. Mr. Takeda, couldn't you make an exception? You said yourself that if rank weren't a factor, his team would be a strong candidate. A representation by you would make a significant difference in their growth and development, and their success reflects positively on you and your company. I'm sorry, Miss Misaki. I do believe with skills like his, he will find a sponsor. Just not with us. Fuck! <laughs> Won't you even give him a chance? Miss Misaki, I'm sure you understand the image that we have built and what would happen to our image if we stopped recruiting from the top 10. I thank you very much for your interest in us and wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Well, shit. His voice was a harsh edge. A harsh? Hard edge of finality. He gestures towards the door, then returns his attention to his desk. All pretenses drop. Yuna storms out of the office, while I follow calmly behind. Disappointment makes my feet feel quite heavy. After we leave the building, you know worlds to face me. What? A hypocrite! How can his company promote taking risks when he won't take any himself? I'm sorry you had to go through that. Do not worry. It was alright. It was... Well... It was quite a long shot anyway. Even though we didn't get the sponsorship, I still appreciate you helping me out. Don't give up just yet. I will get you a sponsor. Uh, what would German say? Hmm. Okay, they all... <laughs> okay, what's the point in picking an option when they're literally all basically the same? Oh my god. Okay, uh, the teams we'll need to beat in all are in the top 20. What are the chances of us finding a good sponsor who hasn't already been scooped up by the comp by competing teams? It's fine. I'll take care of it. How? It's my job. Let's just go back to campus. There's work to do. Very well. Without waiting for me to answer, she hops onto the back of my bike. I get on after her and start the engine. Yuna is quiet the entire ride back to the campus. Oh wait, Yuna is quiet the entire ride back to the campus. When we arrive, she gives me a hurried goodbye and rushes off, leaving me wondering what the fuck does she have planned. Well, sitting here and stewing in my thoughts is unproductive. I have some time before I can go home. Perhaps someone will be free. Just Cowley, okay then. I'm finally done with classes for the day. For some reason, I'm strangely tired and I don't feel like much hanging around the campus. I'll go home and rest up. I walk to the parking lot and spot my bike where I left it. As soon as I reach it, a sleek white car pulls up and blocks the exit. The car has tinted windows and looks like something way out of my price range, as I can only see the back of the car. I suppose that might be a panther. Although the engine is still running, there's no movement from the car. That's kinda weird. Are they waiting for someone? If so, I wish they pick up a different spot. How else are supposed to leave with their block in the exit? Besides, wouldn't it make more sense to pick someone closer? Up someone... Yeah. Pick someone up closer towards the campus and not towards the heart of the parking lot? I hop on my bike as I ponder these questions, just as I'm about to back out. The passenger door opens, and a smooth leg steps out. Following the leg is a cute girl with red hair- Wait a minute. That's Kauri. Stay still. <laughs> I pause on my bike, ready to watch the scene unfold. I'm far away enough that Kauri won't even spot me. The driver's side door opens, and, the older and an older man steps out. He looks European, and definitely not Japanese. I suppose he is in his mid-thirties, and I can keep tell he keeps 
in shape by the way his shirt clings to his biceps. He reaches into the book into the back of his car and hands Kauri a bag. With a wide smile, he envelops her into a hug. I wait for the inevitable slap, but it never happens. Instead, Kauri accepts the hug without protest. How is she so calm right now? She's even smiling back at him. The man waves backhand as he returns to his car and drives off. As she heads back towards the campus, her path leads her straight towards my parked bike. Greetings, Kauri. She jumps slightly at my voice. Oh, it's you. She glances behind her and sighs with relief when the white car is nowhere in sight. What are you doing here? Oh, well, I was on my way home. I'm just picking up my virgin rudder so I can return home. Oh, right, of course. What about you? Heading to my dorm. Oh, I see. What were you up to today? Does it matter? Uh, well, I, I, I'm just curious. I just want to learn more about you. Her expression softens slightly. I can see, and I think I can see a blaint, a, a blaint, a fade fl blush on her, blush of pink on her cheeks. It's nothing, just a thing I went to. I am stumbling in my words. Very well. I should respect Kauri's privacy and trust that she'll tell me when she's ready. Very well, if you say so. She nods. I'm going now. I'll see you later. Yeah, later. Hmm. I truly wonder what that was all about. As soon as Kari is out of view, I kick my bike into gear and head home. I made a happier move when I arrived home. Greetings, I'm home. can't just decide that without telling me. Uncle Kaito's voice stops me. I can see him pacing back and forth in the kitchen. So cut it short. This is the opening day of my new restaurant. They'll expect me to be there, and they'll expect you there too. As I get closer to the kitchen, I can hear a woman's voice on the other side of the line. I really don't care. Part of our arrangement was that we'd consult each other before making a decision, and you didn't. So how you're supposed to be in two places at once really isn't my problem. A flurry of muffled words on the line as, as has Kau, Ka, Ka, Kaito, Kaito frowning deeper and deeper. Don't forget, we are still married. Oh. We promised to do whatever it took to make sure nothing interfered with our careers. Well, if you don't show up, then that will certainly interfere with my career. Married? Is she talking to Aunt Yuki? There's a pause. I think I hear her say, I'll see what I can do, and hangs up. Uncle Kaito slams the phone onto the table, then falls into a chair and holds his head in hands. Greetings, Uncle Kaito. He glances up and gives me a weak smile. You're back. How was school today? It was fine. I sit beside him. I wasn't trying to eavesdrop, but I heard you talking to Aunt Yuki just now. He looks a little uneasy, but waits for me to finish. What did you mean by still married? Isn't Aunt Yuki just away on business? Sort of. Kaito sighs wearily and rubs his temples. I suppose you're old enough to know the truth. Your aunt and I are separated. We have been for the last six months. The last six months? But aren't you divorced? No. Uh. How come we did not know? We're your family, Uncle Kaito. We had to keep it quiet. Divorce is viewed differently here in Japan. It's not as common as in the States, and Yuki and I don't want our personal issues to interfere with our careers. I remember the story his mother used to tell me about how difficult it was when she and father first got married. She could have stayed in Japan even if she wanted to. If you two are just separated, does that mean Aunt Yuki is here in Isokaze? Yes. Well, I understand. Yes, I do know Japan has stricter rules on family and what's proper, so I do not blame you for keeping that sister secret from us. Kaito grins in relief. I don't know how much that means to me, kid. Are you going to perhaps tell Nikki? He thinks before responding. Yes, I will. 
Do you believe she'll be angry that you lied? Nikki has always been more sensitive than I. He shrugs. Maybe, but I think she's mature enough to understand why we did it. Yes, perhaps. It must be an exhausting. It must be an exhausting thing to hide it from everyone. It has been. What did Aunt Yuki say when you told her we were living with you? Uh, well, about that. What? Kaito trails off and refuses to meet my eyes. She does not know we're here. No. What? Were you planning on telling her? Of course. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, I nod. Kaito, I, Uncle Kaito, I, Kaito, I don't what? Uncle Kaito doesn't share any more, but I can't stop myself from asking. Since we're talking about it now, what happened between you two? He sighs. Yuki was ready to have kids, and I wasn't. We discussed the possibility of having children when we first got married, and I kept pushing it back. I wanted to focus on my career, and for a while, so did she. But you know how women are. At some point, their biological clock starts ticking. She didn't want to wait anymore. Oh. But you still weren't ready. No. After that huge argument, we started to drive each other crazy. I became acutely aware of all those small things Yuki did that I hated. We fought all the time, and at some point, we agreed that this wasn't working anymore. And that's how it's been for the last six months until we can figure out a more permanent solution. Huh. It's kind of funny that even though you weren't ready for kids, you ended up with them anyway. Good thing I do not have to stress about having biological children, because I am a virgin walker in the making. The power of my virginity runs deep within me. He grins. Uh, you guys don't count. You practically take care of yourselves. I'm just here to provide the roof. That is actually true. Well, gee, thanks. Perhaps it's good a good thing you didn't have kids. He laughs. So, what was the phone call tonight about? Kaito turned solemn again. Part of our agreement for our separation was that we will both do whatever it takes to keep up the pretense of marriage when it involves our careers. Oh, why not? She's going on some sort of retreat with her girlfriend. Normally we consult with each other before booking any trips to prevent something like this from happening. But this time she didn't. I really need her there. Aunt Yuki and a girl? Did you say she's going on retreat with her girlfriend? Yes. Why? Her girlfriend. Yes. Uncle Kaito, I believe I discovered the reason why your marriage didn't work. Aunt Yuki likes women. <laughs> That's a very Gervin response, not gonna lie. Cause, yeah. Because, I mean, for fuck's sake, this guy believes that virginity grants him ultimate power. <laughs> He's not going to be the smartest guy in the book. <laughs> uh, anyway, he stares at me for a second, then bursts into laughter. No, her friend who is a girl, not her girlfriend. Oh. She is very much into men. Okay, then. I mean, very into men. Y yes, I, I believe you. Trust me, she's definitely a fan of the... Please stop, please. I'm I'm a virgin walker here. I don't need to listen to that crap. Uncle Kaito glances at the clock and stands. I didn't realize how late it's gotten. I have an early start tomorrow. Don't you always have an early start? You get up before I do every day. True, but I have an even earlier start than usual. Oh. Yes. We say good night, and Kaito heads upstairs. I go into the living room and turn on the TV. After watching my shows and the news, I turn in for the night. I wake up again. Another day, another class. As if on autopilot, I get dressed and go through my morning routine. Then I hop on my bike and drive to school as I pick up my alarm clock and throw it in the bin before I go to get a new one after school. <laughs> When I arrive, I head straight for the class, and wait for the professor. He arrives promptly, and begins class. Good morning. 
Today we'll be discussing the differences between military grenade weaponry and those used in recreational matches. I just my uh, 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 okay okay let me try that again. My virginity demands knowledge. This should be interesting stuff. I focus on the professor's lecture. The fundamental difference between the two is that military grenade weaponry are configured for energy output, which can cause lethal damage. Recreational weaponry is closely regulated, so it can't actually destroy the gear frame. Since the shields on a gear get the brunt of the damage, we consider a depowered gear in recreational matches as destroyed. What if someone brought in an unregulated weapon for a match? They'd probably get arrested. Before every match, the equipment of each gear is checked and double-checked to ensure the energy output is within proper parameters. What about the qualifier matches? There was a gear that did some energy output... Uh, uh, as, one, as one, the class looks at me. Uh, During that specific qualifier match, the gear's energy core is what serves with additional power, not his weapons. Yeah. Though, I must admit, uh, I've never seen a core do that before. Hopefully, this young man can enlighten us on how he did it. Uh, uh... No one finds out about my secret. Nice try. My team is not giving up on that information. The class looks disappointed, but the professor grins. Smart move. Don't give away your advantage. I dab and I dab once more, but in the classroom. <clears throat> Let's get back to the lesson. He returns to his lecture. Once the class ends, I hurry out of the room. My phone is already in my hand by the time I get outside. Let's see if anyone's free. Hmm. Hmm. Let's take a look at Yuna. I dial Yuna's number and wait for her to answer. How's that sponsorship going? Greetings, Yuna. It is I, Gervin and Gerv. I was wondering if you got some time to hang out. Perhaps we have another tennis match? I'd love to, but I've got class in about half an hour. I was about to stop and grab a coffee. Would you like to join me? Yes, that sounds great. I shall meet you at the cafe. Okay, see you soon. We hang up, and I walk to the cafe. Yuna's already there by the time I arrive. She sits at the table near the window. After ordering myself a coffee, I join her. She smiles in acknowledgement as I sit down. So, what class do you have next? Just one of my PHPT degree requirement classes. It's not one of the more interesting ones, so I'm not too excited about going. Do you have any more classes today? Nope, all done for the day. That must be nice. Her eyes sparkle as she sips her coffee. So, how are you spending your free time between classes? Anything fun? Hmm, it varies. I go to the library to study or chill in the pilot's lounge. Generally, I like to spend some quality time with my gear. Ah. She glances at the teal stripes on my uniform as she takes a sip of our coffee. What made you decide to be a pilot? Well, my dad was an engineer and I grew up in building mechs for them. Yeah, he and I actually build Eagle together. Eagle must be really special to you then. Yes. So why didn't you go into engineering? My dad always wanted me to be a pilot, but he was colorblind, so he could never become one. He always encouraged me to become a better to for me to become a pilot instead. I never even considered doing anything else. Do not get me wrong, I'm not just doing it because my dad wanted me to. I love piloting. It's just as always something as I all Something I always do, I wanted to do. What about you? I actually almost joined the pilot program. Really? What changed your mind? She hesitates, the words on her lips, but she is debating whether or not to say them. There were a lot of factors, but the biggest reason I chose to study PHPT is because pilot health and safety is frequently overlooked. Pilots go through a rigorous training process, and people don't consider the long-term effects that training has on a person. Especially when you're talking about G-Force training and the like. Being a pilot can take more of a toll on your body than you know. Huh. Oh, cheer up. I'm sure it's not as bad as you think it is. She frowns slightly. That's what most people think, and that's exactly the type of attitude I'm hoping to extinguish. 
So, pilot health and physiotherapy. Does that encompass mental health as well as physical? Yes, definitely. Most people tend to forget that a healthy mind is just as important as a healthy body. But an unhealthy mind can just be as destructive, if not more so, than an unhealthy body. Hmm. Ask about pilot mental health. I'll admit I'm a... I'm a little guilty for of forgetting that myself. Is there a currently a large emphasis on mental health screening for pilots? Or is it ever an ever evolving process? It's an ever evolving process. And unfortunately, it usually takes a tragedy before people realize there's a flaw in the system. Well shit. Really? She not. Obviously, a pilot has to pass a mental health evaluation before he can earn his license. So that screening needs to be more rigorous and more frequent. What do you mean? Some mental illnesses are easily diagnosed, but some are more tricky and some can disappear and reappear, like depression or addictions. Those are hard conditions to spot because for the most part, they must be self-reported. But if a pilot knows that he may lose his license because he has this condition, he may not report it. It could reach a level where he would not only endanger himself, but those around him. Shouldn't his colleagues or teammates report him if they notice that Pilots change behavior. They absolutely should, but the way the current system works, the responsibility falls on the pilot himself and not his peers. Pilots who are on anxiety and depression medication can also be disqualified from earning their license just because of the medication use alone. Isn't that kind of punishing the pilot for treating his condition? There are arguments for both sides. The pilot is being punished for treating his condition, and because he uses the medication, he should be considered to be in sound mind. On the other hand, someone who is using the medication has a greater potential for significant underlying psychiatric or psychological problems, and the side effects of medication is always unpredictable, so they're considered a risk. Well, shit. Huh. I suppose both sides make sense. What side are you on? Yuna's eyes flash. I'm a strong advocate for reform. We need pilots to understand the severity of these conditions. And we can't encourage an environment of secrecy because that is what puts lives at risk. She pauses, then her cheeks flush. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell at you. My goodness, that was almost loud as my voice usually. Do not worry, it is fine. I am just glad someone like you is here to fight for what's best for us pilots. Yuna checks the time. Ah. No, do not be. I believe it is great that you are so passionate ugh, so passionate about this. Passion is what creates change. She smiles brightly. See you later, okay? Yeah. See you later. Farewell. She gathers her things and leaves. I finish off my coffee, then follow her out of the cafe. I'm in the campus gym finishing up my workout. When I return to my locker, there's a missing, there's a missed text from Cowdery. Emergency, <clears throat> emergency meeting, Me now in the hangar. Jeez, all caps. I better get going then. I arrive at the hangar about the same time as Sho and Mayu. Cowdery waits impatiently in front of her gear. Finally. That took you a while. I saw I saw your text. I literally just came here as soon as I got your text. By the power of my virginity, I ran here as fast as possible. I texted before heading over here so we'd be on time. I suppose you walk faster than me, but not for long. The, as time continues to move on, the stronger my virginity becomes. I shall outspeed you when that day comes. Eventually, hopefully. Curry addresses the rest of the team. Kauri blinks, then waves her hand dismissively. Never mind. We have more important things to discuss. Like our sponsor situation. Everyone becomes serious. Our gears need a lot of maintenance to return to peak fighting condition. And the next round is tomorrow. I don't know why, but everyone I talk to is really rude and unhelpful. Yikes. Sho and I share a knowing glance, and Kauri catches us. What? Uh, nothing, no, nothing. Uh, 
She continues to stare. It's just sometimes you can come across a little harsh. I'm just honest. Sure, but honesty doesn't make people like you. You need to get in touch with your soft, warm, feminine. Oh, do not tell her that. Oh no, Kauri raises an eyebrow. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. I whisper into his ear, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> I mean to the warm thing, not the soft and feminine thing. We stare at him blankly, as I face palm. Uh, I'm just going to shut up now. Please do. Before you do, did you manage to get a sponsor? He folds his hands behind his head and leans into them. Nope. You forgot to ask around, didn't you? Maybe. She. He looks sheepish. Kari rolls her eyes. What about you, Mayu? Can your father sponsor us? Mayu shakes her head. Unfortunately, he's backing the team I was originally supposed to join. When I was invited onto the team, father was so happy, he promised he'd sponsor them. Even though I never joined them, he can't go back on his promise. Kauri nods, then faces me. You had that interview yesterday, didn't you? Yes, and well... I, I went to interview with Wolf Tech, and well, it didn't work out. Why am I not surprised? What? It had less to do with me and more with our team's status, by the way. I, I did actually pretty well. I scored two out of three. That's good. I could show you the full report from the SBA if you want to know the official reason, but basically we weren't high enough a rank. I fish up my phone out of my pocket. It flashes low battery warnings at me before it dies completely. Where's the report? D uh, Hold on, I have to charge my phone. My gaze lands on my gear. I race towards it and jump into the cockpit. My teammates call after me, but I ignore them. Once I plug into my phone into the dark connection, it lights up with charging with a charging symbol. Everyone's weary wearing confused face when I climb out of the cockpit. What? Why didn't you just use an outlet? Mayu points to an outlet on the wall. What? When did that get there? Huh. That's new. No, they're not. Uh, I, 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 uh, I, I never really noticed them before. Ooh, what about those? Uh, those? Uh, 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 show points to another outlet. In fact, there are outlets everywhere. Huh. Uh, never seen them before either. <laughs> I sweat. <laughs> Besides, an outlet doesn't do me any good if I don't have a proper phone charger with me. Yeah. Haha. -ha. I guess we're back to square one. Back? We never left square one. Don't get up. Don't do not give up hope just yet. I may have something. Another meeting? No, but my friend in the SVA is still helping us search. Okay. In the meantime, the rest of us should continue our search too. I'll take another look at what Ace offers. Maybe there's some kind of campus grant or funding we can apply for. Mayu. Do you think you could reach out to some of the other major corporations we haven't talked to yet? Maybe with your background, you'll have more luck than we would. Why you not? Maybe Sho can ask around local businesses? Okay. Good idea. Kauri looks at me. I will follow up with my contact and inform all of you on the progress. She nods. Hopefully, we'll find someone. But there's a chance we might have to fight with our gears as is. Well, shit. I'm confident we'll get it someone in time. Mayu smiles at me and nods. Show claps you at the back. Oh. Okay, we have our plan. Text me if you guys get any leads. We all nod. I'm off then. I've got some stuff to take care of. I hope you mean reaching out to the businesses, Show, and not playing your video games. Of course that's what I meant. The arcade industry is a lucrative place to find a sponsor. Mayu sighs. So... He wears his signature smile. Okay, okay. Let's go find us a sponsor. Mayu beams a pair of waves... The pair wave at us before heading out. I'll be going too. Tell me if your friend is successful. Very well. I nod and Kari leaves. Nothing left for me to do but to go home. An unevent uneventful drive later, I arrive at home. I'm back! I walk into an eerily quiet living room. 
Looks like I'm the first one here. It feels a bit strange. Nikki's bright smile is usually here to greet me. Perhaps she has an after-school club activity. Or something. I reach from my pocket to see if she texted me. My heart sinks as my hand to scrap the air. There's a void where my phone should be. Ah, oh, fuck. I left my... I left my goddamn phone in my gear! Shit! The sun is setting and it'll be evening and it'll be evening by the time I reach campus. Hopefully it won't be too much of a trouble to get to Eagle after hours. I remember seeing and why was pretty restrictive on who can enter the hangar at, at night. I hop back on my bike and drive back to the Ace Academy. Surprisingly, traffic is heavier is heavy and it takes longer than expected to reach the campus. A handful of students cross the quad as they head towards their either evening classes or the bus station. Even though the sky is an inky darkness, the pathway on the campus is still bathed with a soft light. It is kind of peaceful. The pilot's lounge is just as busy as always, but I don't recognize too many of the students here. Most of them are most of them must be upperclassmen, either third or fourth year. I stepped through unnoticed and arrived at the hangar entrance. I'm about to swipe in when the guard stops me. Hold on. What's your business in the hangar? I forgot something. It's not a lie, but it would be too embarrassing to tell him the whole truth. Luckily, the guard doesn't seem to care. He gives me a quick once-over and nods. Alright, go ahead and swipe. Thank you. I bring my- I swipe my student ID in the proximity of the sensor. A second later, a, the second the success chimes as the slight doors open. As the door slides open, I follow the tunnel into the hangar. The sound of power tools, machinery, and metallic ringing echoes along the halls. It makes sense that most of the repair work happens after hours. It's a lot safer for them to work without the threat of students walking around causing potential disasters. Instinctively, my feet led me to Eagle. What the? A bluish hue from an active terminal display illuminates my docking station. That doesn't appear to be right. I'm quite sure I turned everything off when I left. Cont cautiously, I tiptoe towards my gear. There's a figure crouched in front of Eagle. The person is dressed entirely in black and wearing the hoodie that hides his or her face. Still engrossed in my gear, the stranger hasn't detected my presence yet. <laughs> by the power of my virginity, I shall stealth behind them and kick their ass. By the power of my virginity, I shall smite them for sneaking up on my goddamn mech. Gear. Same thing. Stay in the shadows. I continuously creep towards Eagle, as close as, di as the distance between us. I notice how small and petite the person is. It must be a girl. But I can't think of anyone else who'd be so interested in my gear. Once I'm a few steps away, she tenses, as if noticing a presence. Shit. Does she have virgin instinct as well? Hmm. Finally, a worthy challenge as I cross my arms with a power stance. <laughs> Before the person can react, my hand grasps her shoulder as she gives me a squeak of surprise. Roughly, I spin her around to face me. Valerie, what the fuck are you doing here? She grins. Her gaze flicks to my hand, still on her shoulder. I never would have guessed you like a Oh, God. It's not like that. No, no, you mistake. I am a virgin walker. I am not interested in you at all. I quickly let go of her. That's not it at all. I'm a bloody virgin walker for crying out loud. I am not interested in any relationships. It's okay. I like this side of you. What? This is not a joke! Her smile falters. What the fuck were you doing to Eagle? Nothing, I promise. You are obviously doing something with a terminal. That's not nothing. She holds up her hand to defense. I wanted to get a better reading on your core. I'm not altering anything, though. Just studying. Why? To figure out how your core was able to sustain such a high energy output for so long without completely burning out. Given the size of your core and the cooling system, the heat dissipation doesn't seem like it would have sustained longer than a few seconds, yet it lasted almost ten minutes! Maybe there's a direct coolant injection to the primary source? I also didn't consider the acceleration of airflow given the hidden frame openings. Perhaps a quick calculation using... My eyes start to glaze over when she continues her technical jargon. As I struggle to pay attention, I can't help but feel a little impressed. 
She is more than meets the eye. Even though she claims she means Eagle no harm, how can I know she is telling the truth? I only met her a few days ago. Still, it appears she is genuinely, cur uh, genuinely curious about how my core works. I'll prove I, wasn't changing anything. I watch as Valerie retraces a few screens with all the configuration data unmodified. Okay then. Mm -hmm. I get it, you are curious, but you can't just break into other people's robots and mess with their parts! She looks away. Sorry. If you were any other person, I would have smite you by now with the power of my virginity. Anyway, we're silent. Then she looks sideways at me. So, I guess you wouldn't want to know that your primary weapon can actually benefit from an airflow exhaust here and here. What? She points inside my open ear. See right there? Uh... Yes, I think. It'll still require validation testing, though. You should probably get your engineer to check it out. My engineer? Yeah, you know. The person who makes sure all your gears are working properly and helps you with any upgrades or improvements. Uh, don't the sponsors do that? Valerie shakes her head. Help a lot when it comes to major repairs or new items. But an engineer on your team takes care of any general maintenance and the like. Oh. Uh. Perhaps we should get an engineer. <laughs> I'll ask my team about getting an engineer. It sounds like we could actually benefit from one. I'm actually very surprised we didn't even think about getting one in the first place. Huh. You definitely would. She scoots closer and smiles. Uh, well, what are you doing? You, you already have one person perfect for the job. What the? Really? She scoots even closer and bats her eyelashes at me. I back away a little bit in I back away a little bit, my virginity feeling threatened of being taken away from me, my ultimate source of power. And who would that be? Valerie sighs. Just think about it. There's another pause. To avoid the awkwardness, I shut down the open terminal. So we should get going then. Yeah. Neither of us moves. Don't touch my gear again without my permission. I promise I won't. I wait for her to leave, but she doesn't budge. Okay, goodbye. Bye. She stands in place and waves. You aren't leaving. Neither are you. Okay, on the count of three, we leave together. She nods. One, two, three. We both stay put. You didn't even move. You kids still doing here? The security security catches us off guard, and we simultaneously stammer, non, and we simultaneously stammer nonsense. He shakes his head. Your business here is done, and then you have to leave. Valerie glances at me, and I glance at her, still waiting for her to move. She doesn't. Suddenly, a strong hand grips my arm. H hey! Uh? The guard holds Valerie too. He physically leans towards the exit. Yes, let's go. <laughs> we pass through the doors, and the guard shuts them behind us. Valerie and I are once again standing in silence. Well, I'll see you around. Likewise, be seeing you. We both headed our separate ways. She walks towards the dorms while I head towards the parking lot. Once I reach my bike, I drive home. Nikki still isn't home by the time I return. Where can she be? I reach into the pocket of my phone and grasping empty air. Uh, oh, fuck! As I scream into the night. Fuck! <laughs> I punch my alarm again and I, roll out, and I combat roll out of my bed. Time to get ready for class. As I head downstairs, I feel uneasy. Today will be our first match. I really hope Yuna was able to work her magic and get us a sponsor. Nikki is rummaging in the living room and I smile when I see her. Even when I'm stressed or worried, Nikki always seems to know how to put my mind at ease. Greetings, Nikki. Just the person I was hoping to sit. Look, if you're hungry, you have to find your own food. I don't have time to cook today. She doesn't pause to look at me when she speaks, but continues gathering what she needs for the day. Hmm. Not quite the welcome I was expecting. Are you all right? Yes, just in a hurry. Oh, then do you need a ride to school? 
She freezes, then whirls on me. Uh, she throws her book into her bag. Uh, she doesn't seem okay. Uh, hmm, what would be a Gervin response? Oh yeah, <laughs> this is totally a Gervin response. When Aunt Flo comes here, that's my cue to disappear. The best way to handle the situation is just to smile and nod. <laughs> okay, well, uh, let me know if you change your mind. We can stop by the store and get you some chocolate. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she furrows her brow in confusion, then her eyes open wide in understanding. Oh, my god. That's not it. oh. Yeah, sure, sure, I know. I wink at her. <laughs> She's out of the door before I could say goodbye. Huh. That was weird. Shocking, I head into the kitchen to, up, to whip up a quick breakfast. Hopefully, hopefully she's in a better mood the next time I see her. After eating, I hop onto my bike and drive to school. Yuna is already cla in class when I arrive. She waves as I walk in, and I sit beside her. Greetings, Yuna. Hey. She wears a white grin and fidgets with excitement. You appear to be in a good mood. I am. She pauses. You? Huh. I suppose so. I thought you'd be a little more excited than that. Really? How come? She seems confused. Uh, well, I guess I just assumed that this had been hard for you, and I thought I'd helped bring you some relief. What? What? Wh what are you talking about? You know, I found you a sponsor. Oh. Oh! Oh, that's amazing! How, how did you manage that? I called in a favor, but that doesn't matter. I've already set up your account with them, and repairs are underway. They started as soon as the paperwork was signed, so your gears will be as good as new in time for the match today. Sick, nasty. I don't know how to thank you, if I'm being completely honest. She blushes. You don't have to. I promise I'd find you one, and I always keep my promises. I don't know what I'd do without you. You're a lifesaver! Yuna's blush deepens, and she seems pleased by my words. Wait, no, I didn't do it in the Gervin voice! Fuck! Ah, it slipped out. I don't Ah, whatever. You should come meet the team before the match. We can share the good news together! Sure, as long as I won't intrude on anything. You won't! She nods. So, I know we won't get our scores back this class, but how do you think we did on the project? Sick, nasty, I do a dab. Yeah, I certainly hope so. We worked really hard on it. She nods. I feel really confident about it. I'm happy we were able to meet over the weekend and finish the project together. I think it made a huge difference than if we worked separately. Indeed. After getting to spend some time with alone with her alone was a, was an added bonus. But well, yeah, in no way, in no way, in in no way regarding any relationship, goals, no. Anyway, as our conversation winds to a close, the professor comes in and starts the class. The professor wraps up the lesson, and the students begin to f begin to file out of the classroom. I gather my belongings and head out of class. I want to text my team, but when I reach into my pocket, I find empty air. Fuck. My phone is still in my gear. Again. Which is still undergoing repairs. Fuck. You know walks up beside me. How much longer do you think until the repairs are done? Hmm. Probably most of the afternoon. That's how long it usually takes if I remember correctly. Oh shit. Alright. I don't want to tell her my phone is in there. That might bring up some awkward questions about what it's doing here. I recalled my team's reaction from yesterday, and I'm confident in my decision to avoid the topic. Well, I'm just eager to check out my gear, that is all. She nods understandingly, a small smile on her lips. When should I come meet the team? Hmm, how about once the repairs are done, we can meet in front of the hangar, and I'll let you in. Great, I'll see you then. Yuna slides her bag over, slings her bag over her shoulder and heads off. I really should text my, text my teams about the repair. And now, rather than later, I, it should be fine to go collect my phone, hopefully. I cross my fingers and pray to my own virginity that I, fate will be in my favor. 
I make my way into the hangar, but Eagle is still isn't in, in its usual dock. They must have moved it away so they can complete the repairs without a chance of accidentally harming the surrounding gears. I s- I s- oh wait, uh, as I approach, I can hear the whirl of machinery muffled through the heavy doors, which are open ajar. I peek inside and see Eagle and Emerald surrounded by a group of mechanics. I push on the doors before I can enter, one of the mechanics jumps over to me. Sorry, only personnel may enter here. My gear is here. Then it's undergoing repairs right now. I know, but, uh, I, I need to get something for my gear. You can get it when repairs are complete. Uh, actually, I need it now. Why? What is it? Uh, 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 I mumbled out my response. It's my phone I left in the cockpit. What? My phone. What is your phone doing in your gear? I was, uh, <laughs> charging it. The mechanic crosses his arms. Your gear is not a charging station. I, I know, I know. He sighs. Alright. Which gear is yours? I point to Eagle. Wait here. Thank you. He closes the door. After a few minutes, he returns with my phone in his hand. Thank you. Is there anything else? Nope. Thank you again. He nods, then shuts the door. As I walk out towards the exit, I am unlocked my phone and am greeted by... 13 messages. They're all from Nikki. Now that I think about it, I don't remember if I saw her last night. Opening them up, I read them in succession. Uh... <clears throat> uh, fuck. What voice... Uh, what was her voice again? Uh... Hello, my hello, my favorite big bro. How would you feel about picking me up from my from Megumi's to my to that tonight, tonight? Did you get my last text? Cooking class is almost over, and I really like to go hang out with Megumi. She can give me a ride over, but can you give me a ride home? Question mark. Is is that a no? Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. If you don't want to get me, then you should say so. Fine, I'll take the bus. Um, are you mad at me? What did I do? Whatever it is, I'm sorry. Please don't be mad at me anymore. Dude, why are you ignoring me? Just tell me. Wow, okay, I literally made all your meals and you can't even do this one little favor for me. Stop being such a jerk. I'm on the bus. I'm on the bus now, thanks to someone. Guess whose team... Oh. Oh, that's Eunice. Oh, guess whose team is now has made a... Ha guess whose team now has made a sponsor and their gear... So already undergoing repairs. Oh, that last test was sent from Yuna this morning before class. Hmm. Well, this certainly explains a lot. No wonder Nikki is so moody this morning. I'm sure once I tell her it was all a misunderstanding, she'll be fine. I shoot my text. My team a text. Gears are undergoing repairs. Meet me in the hangar in two hours. Now that that's taken care of, I still have a lot of time to kill. I wonder what I should do. Hmm. 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 All right. I suppose I'll visit Valerie. To after that whole little excursion with at my gear, I don't want to make sure she's not gonna try and pull any shit again. I got my eye on you, bitch. No one leaves my the sight of my virginity. They will be smited. As soon as they make an action against me, or my gear, or my virgin runner, or my everything. I should spend time on my studies, but I don't want to be cooped inside while in such a nice day out. Taking a stroll through the campus, I will find an isolated bench near the campus cafe and pull out my tablet. Bleh, my tablet. Perhaps I'll take a look at my first assignment for my foreign exchange international bridging class. I'll log into my web link, but I can't find the tab for my class. Maybe the professor hasn't set it up yet. I wonder if anyone else is having trouble. Good thing that Valerie girl gave me her number in class. I find it on my phone and give her a call. Reluctantly. <laughs> she answers the phone almost immediately. Bonjour! She giggles at my attempt. Oui, oui, ma... Is that an A? Mademoiselle! Are you able to access the Foreign Inter Exchange International Bridging class, Class's web link? This is why you called me. 
Yes. She sighs. Hold on. Let me log in. I wait in silence when she types on types on the line. Yeah, I can see it. Why? What's the assignment? The professor wants us to go off campus and explore the city of Isokaze. She pauses, then her voice turns into silk. Oh, now I understand why you called. Oh shit. Oh, yes, I would oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Partner. Partner? Like for life? I hope not. She laughs. Well, you're full, mister. We have that wasn't the intention. That was not the intention. So part of four. Partner for the project, silly. We can work in pairs. Oh. Right. Exploring the city with another person will make it more fun than going alone. Sure, yeah, let's do that. Uh, how about this weekend? It's a date. No, it's not. We'll meet at the park. See you then. It's not a date. She hangs up before I could, uh, <clears throat> she hangs up before I could finish. I really hope she wasn't joking about she was joking about that. I stop to grab coffee at the campus cafe and sip slowly at the hot liquid. Repair should be done by now. Time to go meet everyone. I finish the drink and make my way to the hangar. As promised, Yuna is waiting for me in the front of the hangar doors. After a quick greeting, I swipe over the entrance. A different guard from last night sits in front of the doors. He barely glances at us as I let Yuna into the hangar and towards my gear. Once it comes into my view, I freeze. The magnificent view beauty that is a restored eagle nearly brings a tear to my eye. I place my fist to my chest and make a salute. I circle it, but I can't detect it even a scratch on its armor. If I didn't know any better, I would have never guessed this gear had just gone through a battle. Wow, they really did a good job, didn't they? It doesn't even look like the same robot. Realizing what she just said, she quickly backtracks. I cut her off with a laugh. <laughs> it's okay. I get it, and I agree. She nods, looking a little relieved. Kari is the first to arrive. She darts straight to her gear and does a complete inspection. Sho and Mayu trickle in there after her, then split up and do in their own inspection of their own robots. Yuna and I wait patiently for them to gather around us. The repairs. You got us a sponsor? Well, uh, I didn't. Yuna did. At the mention of her name, Yuna waves to everyone. Yuna, this is Carrie, Sho, and Mayu. Each person nods when their name is called. Everyone, this is Yuna, my contact from the SBA. She's the one who somehow snagged us a sponsor in the nick of time. Who is it? Uh... I have no idea. Luckily, Yuna helps me out before I make too much of a fool of myself. Sho and Mayu glance at each other in surprise, and Kari takes a longer look at Yuna. You're the Misaki girl, right? Yuna fidgets slightly, clearly uncomfortable under Kari's gaze. Yes. Then... Dashu must be... Wait, w wait. Yes. Kari just nods. Mayu's voice is soft but kind. For what you've done. We Wait. Really appreciate it. Oh, fa- oh. Well, that certainly explains that about that favor you were talking about earlier. Yeah, we understand how difficult this must have been for you. Uh, wait, what? Even Sho is unusually solemn. It's really no problem at all. I was just doing my job. Wait, what? Uh, oh, I did know you guys knew Yuna. We don't. Oh. Yuna laughs nervously. Get going. She doesn't even look at anyone in the eye. She doesn't look at anyone in the eye and seems imp impatient to leave. You should stay. Thanks, but I've got some errands to run, and I'm sure you'll want to test out your gears before the match. I'll be there to cheer you guys on, though. Uh, with a hasty goodbye, she rushes out of view. That was quite strange. I hope we did it offend her. That's one thing taken care of. 
Kari looks straight at me. I hope you know how to activate that override mode thing. Oh, uh, strategy around you using it. Uh. Uh. <laughs> no floor play before. No, 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 no. He's a virgin walker. He wouldn't make that ending window. Uh. Uh. I tweaked around with the settings, but, uh. It was, uh. An anomaly. So you don't know how to initiate it? No. Maybe we can just do what you did last time. What? Mayu shakes her head. Last time it activated when his energy level got low. I don't think it's a good idea to risk that, especially against a non AI team. Kari sighs. Mayu's right. What about your weapons? Oh, well, about that, uh, a voice interrupts me. Hi, are you the owner of this gear? He points to the eagle. Whoa, how long has that guy been standing there? Uh, yeah. Your weapons cleared custom. Please sign here. Oh, sweet. He holds out a tablet with the next indicating where I should sign. I glance at my team, but they're all as dumbfounded as I am. Oh, okay then. After signing on the tablet, I give the device back to him. Talk about a convenient coincidence. What? We've been emailing you for the last four days asking you to claim your weaponry. I'm only here because obviously you don't know what to do and I want to close this work ticket. Oh. I fall silent. Show lets out a snicker and cowardly face bombs. Uh, sorry team, my bad. Uh, uh, <laughs> After ensuring the signature on his tablet processes, he nods and leaves. Well, I have the weapons now. Finally. Go configure your gear and join us in the simulation when you're ready. We'll get started with a warm up. Very well. I nod. I'll, I shall see you guys on the flip side. I head to Eagle and make my way into the cockpit. Gear initialization sequence completed. Sick. Loading gear layout screen. I navigate through my gear options and figure, configure it to my preference. After a little bit of time, everything seems to be where it should be. Eagle, save configurations and set as default. Completed. You have a pending virtual simulation request. Accept. In progress. Link, start all. I wait as the eagle connects me to the ver to the team's to my team's virtual simulation match. Ah, uh, there's Mr. Brosip. Yep. I direct eagle to grab its weapons and test them out. It looks like your equipment registered just fine. Hell yeah. Hmm. I'm ready for a fight. Good. Let's see what you can do solo, so we can baseline your abilities. <laughs> I'll give it my best. Sounds good to me, as I crack my fist in the cockpit. By the power of my virginity, I shall smite any opposition that comes my way. Let's match you up with the level 48 AI program. Level 48? That seems a bit high for just a match to gauge his abilities. Ha! That, <laughs> that level is nothing to me. By the power of my virginity, I can smite any opposition. First try. You lost numerous times before learning its pattern. Ha ha ha. Watch as our virgin walker does it on his first try. I'm up for it. Ha. Huh. I do not mind the challenge. My virginity shall smite it immediately. Go ahead. Summon that AI program. See, show. At least he's willing to try something hard. Maybe you should try something hard. Oh. What did you oh write? boy. Oh, you should have really watched what you said there, show. This is why I'm a virgin walker. I do not make such innuendos. Kari's gear points its blade at Emerald. Wait, I didn't mean it to sound like that. Bam! Emerald destroyed. Okay, maybe I deserved that. So about that level 48 AI. Shut up! I'm loading it now. Kari disabled her video feed before I can guarantee. T her cheeks are burning. My teammates' gears vanish as I enter as they enter spectator mode. A few seconds later, an enemy gear prompts at my on my radar. Very well, Eagle. Let's show them what we got. Combat mode activated. I begin I begin by equipping my rifle and blasting the AI with energy rounds. The rounds mostly connect, bouncing off the edges of the shield. Something must be wrong with the aim. I'm not bad at that bad of a shot. Well, I certainly can't use those. I swing my sword and grin 
I'm just as lethal with the blade anyway. Hurrah! Raising my sword, I take a striking stance. What the? My blade is not powering up. I barely had time to register what happened when I see a sword charging at me. Oh shit! Uh, dodge! Uh. By the power of my virgin instinct, I blocked the attack just in time, but I still eat up a lot of damage. These higher level AIs are no joke. Uh. The AI charges at me, and I'm forced to block. For the rest of the match, I'm stuck in a defensive position, and all my weapons do very little damage for some reason. What the fuck is this shit? Uh, it's not long before the AI is drained and I get depowered. My weaponry barely did any damage. What the fuck? Why am I getting nerfed? Again! Carry size with the intercom. I, mean, I didn't expect much, but that was really bad. My equipment wasn't functioning properly. Really? What happened? I'm not sure. I'm doing a check now. My team waits patiently as I run some diagnostic tools. What the fuck? Ah, I believe I got it. It looks like the equipment wasn't calibrated after Customs did their in-depth examination. That's why the aim and attacks were off. Is it something you can fix? Uh, not exactly. There are some hardware tweaks that I need to that need to be done, but I think it may require an engineer. I suppose that makes sense. Gears also need the occasional tire rotation and oil change to make sure they function well. Well, fuck. But in case you didn't notice, we don't have an engineer. Oh boy. <sighs> I believe I know someone. I shall meet you guys in the hangar a little bit later. The light flashed green on my teammates' comm screens as they disconnect from the simulator. After jumping out of my cockpit, I reunite with my team and dial Valerie's number. Very, very reluctantly. Hello. Hey. I can practically hear the smile in her voice. How? Just a hunch. Was this something you saw in my gear last night? She laughs. <laughs> Call it an engineer's intuition. So, I'm guessing something's not working right, and you're in need of an engineer. Yes, miss. <laughs> Luckily, I can help. Thank you, Valerie. Come meet us by Eagle. She hangs up. We don't have to wait long before Valerie arrives. I wave her over and she stands right beside me. I thank you for coming. Of course. I wouldn't leave you hanging when you need me. Oh boy. She smiles broadly. Show coughs. <clears throat> right. So this is the team. I point to each of them in turn. This is Mayu, Sho, and Kauri. Both Mayu and Sho wave while Kauri nods. Hey everyone, this is. I'm Valerie. I watched your match during qualifiers and was impressed by all of you. It's great to finally meet you. Believe me, it is great to meet you too. Yeah, d take Sho instead, not me. My virginity is in threat range whenever I'm in proximity with this being. Mayu glances at Sho while Valerie smirks. You're an engineer? That's right. Cowardly points to Eagle. Are you able to calibrate his weaponry? Yeah, my equipment just had just passed through customs and the calibrations are fucking off. I'll leave it to me. She saunters over to Eagle's terminal and turns it on. Cowardly follows closely behind her and watches her work. Occasionally she'll ask a question which Valley will happily answer. Show and show Mayu and I hang back to give her space to work. I don't know where you found such a hot engineer, but thank you for bringing her here. Well, uh, I meant to. Well, actually, she found me. We have a foreign exchange class together. Oh man, that's not an open course. You're lucky. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> Mayu pouts and then sighs. You're all right there, Mayu. Yeah. But then, but she joins the girls right after answering. Sho and I exchange a glance. What's up with her? I don't know. Was it something we said? Hmm. Must be that time of the month again. Women's cycles really do sync up. My sister's is on hers too. My sister is on hers too. I am so sorry, Joseph. Do not worry. It's not the first time I encounter such a phenomenon. 
Anyway, Valerie is not only calibrated by my weapon. My has not only calibrated my weapons, she also tweaked the rest of my, the team's gears to improve everyone's performance. Well, hot damn. Well, that about does it. I didn't know that changing one small setting will increase my power by 10%. Yep. Trust me, you'll notice the difference in your match today. Kari seems impressed. Your gears are all ready to go, so I'm gonna head out. I've still got some things to get done if I want to catch your match. Let me know how all of your equipment feel when you test them out again. If I need to do some more tweaking, I will. Sure, thank you again for doing all this. <laughs> it was my pleasure. Good luck with the match. I'll be cheering for you. Uh, she waves goodbye, then leaves. I can't wait to test out those changes she made. She said she increased my speed. Those guys leave my dust out there. Sick. I watched her improve the coolant in my weaponry. She does seem very knowledgeable about gears. She must be taking an engineering course. Okay. Or now degree. Now everyone's gears have been improved and weapons recalibrated. Let's try out those changes in the simulator. Hell yes. All right, take two. Within minutes, we are back in the virtual arena. All right. We don't have too much time. So we'll do a team match. Very well. What's the plan this time? No plan. Being able to improvise during a match is important. Keep communications open so we can change tactics accordingly. Okay. As you wish. We're a AI team now. Bring it on. My virginity shall smite all of you. The simulation boots on my team of enemy gears. Virginity forever! We spread out and eat, and each face our own targets. Looks like I'm not the only one who wants to see what the new calibrations can do. I face my opponent and go for my rifle. The enemy charges at me, so I take aim. Shoot. Before my enemy can get close, I shoot one test shot and hit it in the chest. The AI is pushed back from the force of my virgin blast. Yes, we are back in business. I am finally not dirty to nerf just the character. Just to be sure, I run through my other weapons. Everything seems to be working in order. As I settle on my longsword, I see a lo the looming shadow of an attack. Hurrah! Hurrah! I quickly block and attack and parry with the strike of my own. I feign the attack on the right, and when the AI moves the block, I cha and change sides and strike above it instead. Hurrah! The AI does not move fast enough and absorbs the blow. Before I can recover, I slice at it again from below, and the AI goes dark. Soon, the match is over. It appears things are working perfectly on my end. Same here. The tweak Valerie made might look small on paper, but the extra speed feels a lot better. My rifle cooldown period also dropped about half a second. Good. Between the gear repairs and collaboration upgrades, we should have a strong performance today. Hell yes! Suddenly a notification pops up on my screen. Hello, Ace 2049. 11. Pilot, your battle is scheduled to begin soon. Please exit your gear so it may undergo pre-match preparation. Hey, did you guys just receive a message too? Oh, that reminds me. We completely forgot to pick a team name. Ace 2049-11 doesn't go well on a t-shirt. We can choose a name later. Mayu and I will meet you guys in the pre-combat room. Okay. Sounds good. Boop. We quickly hop out of our gears and separate into our corresponding changing rooms. We once we've changed into our pilot suits, we meet in front of the hollow table in the pre-combat room. Do we know who we're matched against? No. They don't tell you at Ace who you'll play. Mayu shakes her head. No, they do. I think it's just been a busy week for us, so we didn't check. F fuck. Getting a sponsor was our top priority. I didn't have the time to research our opponent. Well, do not worry. By the power of my virgin instincts, I shall get a good reading on our opponent before we make our plan to attack. Guess we're all finding out now, then. Indeed. Kari nods as she flips through the menus on the hollow table. Let's see here. Huh? Uh. ACE 204911 versus... Kari suddenly deflates while Shok perks up with excitement. Yes! What? Ace Ace 24911 versus Claw of the Wind Wild? You're in for a treat, 
Broseph. You're in for a Oh wait, no, that's <laughs> that's show. Okay. Well, you seem excited, but Carrie looks less than pl but Piers Carrie looks less than please. Nah, that's just her default expression. Shut up, you idiot! Of course you like Claw of the Wild. Can someone please fill me in? Um, well, the leader of that team is in the same dorm as Show, Tatsuo Kimura. Oh. But that still doesn't quite explain why Kauri. Because he's even more annoying than Sho. Sho crosses his arms. So rude. Tatsuo and I are incredibly pleasant. Maybe we should plan for the match while we still have time? We all glance at Mayu. I mean, if it's not too much trouble. She's right. I'll pull up what information I can on Claw of the Wind. Wait, what? Did she just. Did she just make the same mistake I did in my voice acting? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, that's funny. We wait while Kari sets up in the playing field on the hologram. Soon both our gears and the enemy's gears populate the field. Okay, done. Sho, do you have some insight on them? Sho searches his brow, this scratches his brow. Tatsuo. If we can take him out, then the rest won't be much of a challenge without his leadership. If he's calling the shots, wouldn't he be hanging back in a safe position? It's not his style. He'll be the one charging in head first. Huh. That appears to be a tactical error. Perhaps we could use that to our advantage. Kari nods. We can set up a trap and focus target him when he rushes in. We watch as Kari ma maps out our plan of operation. Hmm. This might actually work. I agree. The plan sounds good. Yes, it sounds fine to me. My virgin instinct does not pick up any errors. Hopefully it is not wrong. I think his teammates will work hard to protect him if they see what we're doing. Hmm, that's true. Hmm, we think for a moment. One of us can divert their attention at the start of the match to get them to separate. Huh? One person against three gears? <laughs> Suicide mission. It's about winning the match show, not the individual battle. This sets us up with a favorable trade. That makes sense, but who will be the decoy? We look at each other. Whoever is picked will surely get depowered, but hopefully they can keep the enemy distir distir bleh, distracted long enough for Tatsu to be taken out. Hm. I shall do it. By the power of my virginity, I shall stall the three gears and possibly unlock that n and possibly defeat all three of them like I did with the, with the examination, except it was... Except it will be three instead of two. I got this. My, the, by the power of my virginity, I shall defeat such opposition alone. Really? Are you sure? Hell yes. I nod with a, I nod with a stern stance. You guys have competed together before and know how to play off each other's strengths to defeat Tatsuo. Kali nods, crossing her arms. Just remember that your goal is to delay them from covering Tetsuo. As if on cue, the map flashes red as the arena entrance doors slide open. Alright, time to show them what we got. Ha, good one. Kari lets out a sigh. <sighs> you said show in your head, didn't you? Um, maybe... Mayu stifles the giggle. If anything, you can always count on show to keep the team morale up. Let us go! Virginity! Away! As we enter in the arena, in our, in our gears, the first thing I notice is the Pax Stadium. This is a lot. This is still a top 25 team intramural match, so it makes sense more people would come out to watch. My heart bounds in my chest. This is our first match against live opponents. The anticipation is both exciting and nerve-wracking. The enemy team enters from the other side of the arena. What on earth? Rays of justice illuminate the battlefield. Two worthy predators enter, but a single phoenix shall rise from the ashes of war. Oh my god. I can hear the her, the, her cringe through her calm.
changing my intercom to team chat only. We shall face off in what will be told as legend for generations to come. And muting show as well. <laughs> Blood and tears will be shed. For greatness demands the fiery cleansing of weakness. Are you all ready for a 2049-11 versus Claw of the Wild? The crowd roars in response. The stadium lights go from red to yellow. My hands clutch my controls. And begin. Rhinos, take oh boy. Holy shit, here they come. As expected, their entire team does a full blitz towards us. Focus and follow the plan. All our comms flash green in affirmation. I'm breaking off. Now. Okay. Keep them busy as long as you can. Very well. Right. Virginity, away! I separate from the group. A stray sheep. Bring it on, bitch! Two enemy gears divert their course and charge towards me. One of them didn't take the bait. Put the press of fire between Tatsuo and the other gear. Force it to separate and disengage. Mario and Sho unload a hail of energy beams with no clear path for the adversary gear to go. It charged and changes course to me. Bring it on, bitch! My virginity can take all of you on! Focus. Sorry. Converge under Tatsuo now. And you, keep the rest locked down as long as you can. That I shall. Engaging them now. I'm soon surrounded by three enemy gears. At least the trap worked. Tatsuo won't be able to run unless he wants to be shot in his flank. Oh boy, here we go. Very well. Come at me, bitch! I shall, by the power of my virginity, I shall stall. The goal is to buy as much time as possible. I divert all my energy output to shields and brace myself for the onslaught. Bring it on, motherfu- Oh my god! What? As my gear nears to the ground, my display goes black for a second before entering spectator mode. Tatsu was taken out shortly after my fall. The rest of my team engages the remaining targets. I can't help but wonder why the overdrive mode didn't activate like last time. I smack the side of my controller. Fuck! <laughs> Eagle, why did you not in initiate the emergency power core protocol? Protocol EPC was unavailable. What? 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 Requested diagnostic data unavailable. Well, that's fucking helpful. Sergeant Thanks. Yes, an astute observation. Sarcasm detected. Okay, you can stop now. Affirmative. I have a look into the details about Protocol EPC. It would have, it would have come in handy in a situation like this. I blink as the victory prompt scrolls across my displays. The crowd erupts into cheers. Looks like the plan worked without a hitch. Heh, <laughs> no problem. By the power of my virginity, I was able to stall. The announcer's voice catches up catches us by all by surprise. Still in our gears, we make our way to the exit when Tatsuo appears before us. to challenge the king of the wild we're up for a rematch anytime tatsuo show and tatsuo's gears shake hands the sun sets and so we depart ducks fly together tatsuo and, all, and his teammates all boost out of the arena in a v shape well, not going to lie, they're all quite coordinated when, well, the leader's not down. My team and I meet up in the arena stands after exiting our gears. This should help bump us up into the top 20. Claw of the Wild are ranked 18. Sick. Well played. How's Eagle holding up?
scarred with battle wounds, exactly how it should be. It's showing off signs of a well-fought battle. I like it. Build character. Indeed. I'm actually a little surprised. What's up, Mayu? Oh, I was just trying to think of why your overdrive mode didn't activate. Kari perks up. Yeah, the perimeters were the same when you were about to get depowered. Except this time, you did get depowered. Maybe we're missing something? I'll have to look into it. Hey, we have an engineer now who can help with that. Oh boy. Mayu beams. That's right! Speaking of which, I wonder if she was able to watch the match. And I wonder if she noticed any more changes she can help to improve our gears. Good thinking. I pull out my phone to text Valerie, but it looks like she already beat me to it. Congrats on the win. I'm just a little sad eel, that little pet Got depowered. Oh, whoa. <laughs> anyway, I'll be in the quad for a bit. You should come drop by. She's at the campus quad. We can meet her. Meet her there. We can meet her up with there. Let's change out of these suits and go meet her. We nod and make our way out of the arena stands. Sho and I change into our uniforms and meet the girl outside. Meet the girls outside. Once we reach the quad, I easily spot Valerie with a with her hair, with her light blonde hair. I wonder if I stick out just as much. I look at my blonde hair. She grins as we approach. Oh hey, you came. <laughs> Usually, oh my god. Greetings, greetings, Valerie. She nods. It looks like you brought company. Kauri and Mayu both greet her. Show officer a wave. If it's not too much trouble. Maybe please ask you a couple of questions. Sure. What's up? Did you watch the match? Of course. Actually, I wanted to talk to you guys about a few ideas I have in mind to improve your gear performance. Kari looks pleasantly surprised. Really? Mm-hmm. I'm drafting up the plans for the improvements, but there's still a few calculations to do. I'll have a completed report done in a few days. Oh wow! That would be great. Show is just a surprise. If someone managed to impress Kauri. I thought the day would never come. Hey, I impressed her in during the first examination. Shut up, Show. Very, very uh, Valerie stifles a giggle with her hand. Mayu also cracks a smile. Kauri turns back to Valerie. Did you watch the qualifier matches last week too? Valerie nods. The overdrive mode. You're wondering how it works? That piqued my interest, you know. Not yet. I was hoping I could research your core. With your permission, of course. She winks at me. Although I didn't I don't I, although I didn't appreciate her snoo snooping, and I almost smited her with the power of my virginity, having her investigate this phenomenon would be a huge benefit. With supervision, sure. Valerie pouts playfully. Mm -hmm. Oh, fine. Those were all the questions I had. An awkward silence settles. So Sho suddenly speaks up. All right, there's only one thing left to do. What's that? Celebrate our victory. Party at my place. Fair Valerie giggles in excitement. <laughs> Count me in. That's the spirit. Hell yeah. What about the rest of you? Simultaneously, Kauri and Mayu shake their heads. I'm not really the partying type. I don't think so. Come on, this is our first victory together. As a team. Uh, didn't we win the last round? He spreads his arms wide, gesturing to everyone around him, and emphasizes Valerie. As a team. Aww, I'm part of the team. Oh boy. Sho pulls all of us into a hug. Kauri immediately wriggles free and tries to protest, but Sho speaks before she can. I won't take no for an answer. As my father always says, a team that parties together, wins together. He doesn't say that. Well, he could have in a past life or something. So, does this mean we should go now? I suppose, if everyone's going, I can go too. Kauri sighs. Fine, but only for a little bit. And you're coming too, right, Mr. Brosif? Indeed. Let's go then. Uh, oh yes, I should probably invite Yuna. <laughs> Don't be inconsiderate. Hey, show. I'm going to text Yuna. Perhaps you'd like to go too. Good idea. The whole team really will party together. 
When I check my phone, there's a message already waiting for me from Yuna. Congratulations on your victory. Your gears look so good out there, by the way. Huh. Holding back a smile, I reply to her text. Thank you. We're all going to show Storm to celebrate. You should come. Not sexually. <laughs> I say, as I specify that in the text, being a virgin walker. Yuna responds immediately. <laughs> I would, but I already have plans. Next time for sure, have fun. Sho lets go of everyone and leads the way. Valerie keeps pace with him, while the rest of us hang back, a little unsure of what we just agreed to. As soon as we step foot into the house, Sho is surrounded by his brosives, all of them who shower with him in praises and, calcul and calculations and front congratulations. Thanks, guys. How's Tatsuo and company? Tatsuo took him to a forbidden hot spring to recover flesh wounds and reinvigorate their inner chi. Oh, God. <laughs> that sounds like him. They all burst into the wrath there, laughter. The place is already crowded with pilots from other dorms, and the more and more keep filling in at a steady pace. Everyone fans out, Mayu sticks close to show, while Valerie, yeah, while Valerie makes a dive for the kitchen. A dark-haired female pilot walks past us and greets Cowley. She seems quite familiar. Was she checking the leaderboards before while I was pre yeah, while I was in the pilot's lounge? Either way, Cowley scowls when she sees the girl who just laughs out and grabs Cowdy's arm, dragging her into the throng of people. I push my way past in the living room and hear music coming from a short staircase leading to the lower level. It's dark, but strobes of color light flash from below. Sounds like there's a rave going on. I'm not sure about going down there. Carefully, I weep my way into the kitchen, narrowly avoiding a dowsing a do douse, a doozing from a fruity drink. When I arrive, I dock at the cornucopia of alcohol. I held myself to... Hmm. By the power of my virginity, I can take any forms of liquor. Besides the obscene amount of beer, there's also plum wine, sake, and a whiskey and whiskey available. Hmm. I'm gonna down some motherfucking wine. I never actually had plum wine before. It's not the common in the states, and frankly, kind of girly. Still, I brought a small amount into a cup and hazard a taste. The pleas it was pleasantly sweet. And you can really taste the plums. Now that I have a drink, I should find my friends. Let's look for... Sho, my good old friend. I head back to the living room and spot Sho surrounded by a group of his dorm mates. They're urging him to join, but Sho keeps shaking his head. By the time I approach, his friends have moved on and Sho is left standing alone. Greetings, Sho. Mr. Broseph? What was that all about? I nod towards his retreating dorm mates. Eh, nothing. They were gonna challenge someone to a drinking match or something. Have you seen Mayu? I shake my head. Sho seems a little concerned. Hmm. Do you think she left? I promised that I'd hang out with her, but I don't see her anywhere. Maybe I should do another round and look again. Uh, hmm. Uh, what if Mayu's looking for you too? It might be better for you to stay here. Well, maybe Mayu got separated from you and is searching for you too. If you're both, both moving around, it'll be harder for you to find each other. That makes sense. Yeah, I think I'll stay here. Good idea. But wait, what if Mayu is standing in one spot waiting for me? Oh, fuck, I didn't think of that. I doubt it. Parties aren't her thing. Show pauses, then brightens You're up. Right. Let's just focus on having fun. Sounds like a plan to me. A couple of girls approach us. They're sipping their drinks and giggling. The one on the right has long dark hair, while the one on the left has her hair tied into a braid. They're both wearing dresses that hug every, every that hug every curve, and my gaze lingers at their skirts, teasingly low hemline, and I feel the clutch of my virginity being at the threats of being destroyed. Fratbra, hey, we watched your match earlier today. You were so good out there. Uh, thanks. Dad, you were so impressive. How did you do it? It was just a lot of hard work. I just I simply did what I had to do, and by the power of my virginity, the strategy was to lead. Well, actually, by the power of my virginity, I was able to lead the three teammates away from Tatsuo, so the rest of my team to take him out. And you fought so bravely against them. Yeah. 
Hell yeah, Sho interjects. When I faced off against Tatsuo? The girls pause, surprised by Sho's outburst. I'm not sure. Weren't you fighting him in a group? Oof. Yeah, but there were a few moments where we battled one on one. Sorry. Oh. They smile politely. The girls return their attentions to me. So we were thinking of grabbing another drink. How about you come with us? I thank you for the offer, but I'm alright for now. Perhaps later. Sure, come find us at any time. With angry looks and smiles, they disappear into the crowd. What was that, Brosif? I don't know. Those girls were totally into you. Yes, and I feel the thread of my virginity almost being snapped within an instant. I shrug. And you just turned them down. Of course I did. Stud, he knows he can get any girl he wants. No, I'm a fucking virgin walker. My power is heavily reliant on the on the presence of my virginity. If I were to lose it now, I'd be powerless. What's your secret? Actually, I envy you. I wish I were to. I wish I were a bit more like you. When no girl ever approaches me, you don't know how lucky how lucky you are. Show frowns. What? I'm be I'm I'm quite I'm serious. I'm a fucking virgin walker for crying out loud. Look, don't think too much about it. Just be yourself. I'm sure they'll like you. you think so? That's what I do. Hmm. Even though every even though everything I stand for goes against goes against such reality, but even but the reality seems to well reflect in an opposite manner. I suppose it is kind of like Newton's third law if you were to think about it. I point to two different girls who are standing on the far end of the room. Why don't you try talking to them? Remember, just be yourself. Yeah, you're right. I can do this. Grinning, Shaw walks up to the girls and works his magic on one with the long hair. I can't hear what he says, but after a few seconds, the smile drops off her face and she throws her hands over her chest. Sho then turns to her friend, who shakes her head before he can get a word out. Yikes. That didn't appear to go well. Dejected, Sho trudges back to me. Being myself didn't work. Usually saying something nice helps. I did. What did you say? I told her that I liked her dress. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be bad. That doesn't seem to be too bad. And how it emphasized her boobs. Oh. Oh. What? Yes, he's quite hopeless. And I'm not even trying, even though everything I believe in goes against the fucking reality that's happening around me. How? I'm sure there's a girl for you out there, hopefully. I hope so. Yeah. He sighs, and we stand in silence, watching the crowd. So, how's your sister? Bro. But the... Bro. 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 I will fucking end you. Go near her, and I promise the last thing you'll see will be me and my p and the power of my virginity that I shall use to smite you. Those are some pretty harsh words, coming from my future brother-in-law. Don't you motherfucking? That's it. <laughs> Get back here! I shall smite you with my virginity. Unfortunately, we c I can't share what happens next. But rest assured, you will never think about Nikki uh, like Nikki like that again. Yes. I struck fear to his heart by the power of my virginity. He shouldn't have underestimated my power. Anyway, it's late by the time I get home, and everyone is already asleep. I tiptoe into my room and collapse into my bed, exhausted. I fall I fell asleep as soon as my head hits the pillow. Ha, that'll show show. Ha, that kinda rhymed. Oh wait, wait, no, it's more of an illiterate, oh, whatever. The sun shining through my window splashes in my face and wakes me up. I stretch a wide yawn <clears throat> and glad at the clock. Glad, gland? No, okay, no, hormones are not in okay, whatever. And glance at the clock, nearly ten. I'm glad I got another chance to sleep in after the party last night, but I don't want to waste my weekend. I hop out of my bed and get ready for the day. What is my plan today? Just sleep and skip my day, why not? I want to do nothing but, but I want to do nothing productive with my time and just sleep in. But first, I must gorge myself on some delicious takeout food. I call a nearby restaurant and place an order obscenely large for a single person to eat. 
Pickup will be ready in 15 minutes. After making my plans, I head downstairs. Oh, hey. Didn't see you there, big bro. She seems to be back to her usual self. I'm glad to see you're all feeling better. <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely am. As she speaks, a devilish smile graces her lips. Hmm. She's up to something. Anyway, you going out today? Yes, why? She starts giggling. Mm, no reason. Okay. Hey, I'm actually glad I ran into you. I wish to apologize. apologize? Yes, I actually saw your text from a couple of days ago, and I'm sorry I didn't answer. I didn't have my phone on me, so I didn't see them until, well, uh, later. Nikki crosses her arms. Yeah, sure. Likely story. What? No, no, really, I accidentally left it in my gear. What? Twice. Oh, come on, at least come up with something more believable. What, what's more believable than the truth? No, no really, it's the truth. What? I, it was charging. She blinks at me. You really are hopeless. Oh, come on. Look, look, look. I pull up my message and flash the phone in her face. Rolling her eyes, she reluctantly takes a look. What do you mean by, oh? She bites her lips and she as she continues scrolling. No. She hands back my phone. She seems worried about something. Probably how, how she means she was to me yesterday. Do not worry, Nikki. I understand why you were angry yesterday, but I wish for you to know I didn't do it on purpose. No hard feelings, right? Um, about that. What? Remember when you said you were going out today? Yes. You might not want to do that. Why not? Nikki shuffles her feet and continues to bite her lips. Because you definitely don't want to go into the garage. What? What the? My eyes widen. I spin my heel and race towards the garage as Nikki cries out for me to wait. <laughs> throwing open the door. Actually, no. Instead of throwing open the door, I kick it open. I've, I feel my hand squeezing in my heart. Nikki catches up to me and cringes. Now, before you get mad... Nikki? Just remember that I was really, really annoyed with you and wanted revenge. Not helping. She quiets down, but she can't stand in silence. At least it looks really pretty now. It looks like a unicorn threw up all over my virgin runner. All I can do is just stare in the horror at the glittery desecration of my beautiful virgin runner. As a single tear goes down my eye, not out of joy, but in disappointment. An absolute woe. Nikki hides her face in her hands. I'm sorry. I promise I'll clean it up. Yeah, you will. Let me get a bucket. Nikki turns to leave, but I sigh. Ugh, not right now, but I have to go. I take another look at the pink sparkles wink winking in the light. Perhaps I should take the bus. No, no, I can't. The bus won't come for another 20 minutes, and I need to leave now. Okay. Uh, I'll clean it up later, then. I nod. With a grimace, I reluctantly ease myself onto my bike. The engine roars to life, and glitter flutters behind me in a rainbow trail of happiness. Oh boy, this is uh, quite embarrassing, I must say. I head out to get my order anyways. Hmm. Hmm. I pick up my order and ended up eating it at the restaurant alone. With some time to kill, I head off to the mall and cruise around until it's time to head home. When I arrive home, Kaito is staring Uncle Kaito is staring at his phone with a silly grin on his face. Greetings, Uncle Kaito. He glances at me. Back. How was your day? Good. It appears yours was a good one too. Kaito smiles even broader. I just got off the phone with Yuki and I am saved. Oh, saved. She called me today and apologized for going against our agreement. Oh, pieces of our last conversation resurfaced in my memory. Ah, the agreement you made when you two separated. Uncle Kaito nods. She says that she can make the restaurant opening ceremony after all. Bitchin. See, everything worked out. Yeah, I don't know what I was so worried about. Yuki has always been reliable and a true friend. Even after we separated, she was always there when I needed her. Sounds like you still care for her. 
Seems like you care really deeply for her. Well, of course. I did love her. Perhaps you still do. Who do you think you are, the love doctor? I'm just saying. This is the way things are between Yuki and I, and this is how it needs to stay. If you say so. so I don't want to hear any more out of you. V very well, I trust your judgment. You're grounded if you keep this up, mister. What? No! Uncle Kaito laughs. I'm just messing with you. We both turn to see Nikki wearing her signature smile as she glances over at me. Her smile falters. Before you say it, I'll go clean up your bike now. Clean up his bike? You do not want to know. Kaito grins. Well, I have a bit of free time now, and I'm in the mood to celebrate. Do you guys want to watch something on Netflix? Nikki perks up at the idea, then stares pleadingly at me. Nikki, before I had a chance to speak, she pouts her lips and looks at me with puppy dog eyes. You know that won't work. <laughs> Her voice chokes up. Damn it! Not even the power of my virginity is able to resist such an adorable look. Very well. You can stay for one episode. Nikki beams. Hey, thanks, bro. Kaito laughs at our exchange as we settled onto the couch. You're going to be in real trouble, kiddo, if you give in so easily to the ladies. It's not just. Not for me. Yes, exactly. She's family. If it were any other woman, I would have dropped kicked her with the power of my virginity. Anyway, what are you doing? Shush, pillow. Uh, okay then, I think about protesting, but I realize how useless that'll be. Kaito notices my sigh of resignation and grins. <laughs> Forget about being in trouble, you're already doomed. Uh, 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 I shrug. You think to be a, I'd be a me? Uh, you think I'd be immune to her witchcraft after 17 years of this? What do you guys want to watch? Hmm. Shrugs. Strokes chin. Hmm. 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 Gear of Thrones. <laughs> I am Stannis of House Girethian. My first of my name, King of Andals, and the first man, Lord of the Eight Kingdoms, and the Guardian of the Realm. We grin at each other while Nikki looks perple uh, perple perplexed. Actually, it isn't exact. This isn't exactly a family show. Agreed. Nikki sighs in relief. Oh, good, because I've already seen it. What? I think we need to discuss what's appropriate oh. for you to watch, young lady. I watch it with my friends for the story. We skip the other parts. No, they weren't the best parts. <laughs> Uncle Kaito not just at me. I, yeah, let's do something else. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, the Big Gear Theory. Two genius gear engineers' lives are turned upside down when a blondie bombshell moves in next door. Mm hmm, especially the scientific parts. They're actually the most accurate I've ever seen. Well, heard. Hey, my virginity demands knowledge. Nikki. What? It's a compliment. I don't mind watching this either. Then it's settled. Kaito navigates to Netflix and selects the show. After binge watching a few episodes, Kaito stretches out and pushes off the couch. That was a great break. I have to get some work done before midnight, though. Very well. Don't stay up too late, you two. Okay. Kaito retreats to the kitchen where his laptops and papers are scattered. Nikki heaves a long sigh. Well, I guess it's time for me to clean off your bike. Before she can point her sad eyes at me, I shake my head. You can do it tomorrow. She immediately brightens up. Okay. In that case, I'm going to get started on my homework. Ha, ah, homework. It's my senior year. I need to maintain my grades to get into a good school. She has a point. Very well, let me know if you need any help. Thanks. It's nothing too difficult. Just a lot of questions to go through. Okay. We both nod, say our goodnights to Kaito, and head to our rooms. I spent the rest of the evening relaxing until it's time to sleep. As I crawl into my bed, my phone buzzes. I open up a text from Sho. 
Hey yo, uh, guess what holiday is coming up next? Uh, coming up next month. I'll give you a hint. We're all going to the beach. You yeah, interested? A holiday in which we all go to the beach. I have no idea what that holiday is, but I already like it. I text back. You know it. Time passes in a blur, and suddenly it's been a month since Nikki and I moved to the Isokaze and started. And I started at Ace Academy. Time skip. My team and I are stronger than ever, and our winning streak has not been broken. Harry, Isho, and Mayu and I spent many evenings practicing in the hangar, learning how to anticipate each other's needs on the field. Yuna continues to manage our sponsorship from Dashu, and she's become more comfortable with the team. Valerie works hard behind the scenes and continually update our gears, and after all the tweaks she has given Eagle, I'm more confident than ever to, in my max abilities. I've had a surprising number of companies reach out to me to partner and to partner and research my core, but I declined them. With each, I declined each invitation. I do not feel comfortable having strangers poke at prod at my dad's legacy, especially when I don't understand what's going on myself. So, by the power of my virginity, I told them to shut the fuck up and leave. <laughs> On the home front, Uncle Taito is still as busy as ever, now that his newly opened cafe has become insanely popular. Nikki spends most of her time at her school's cooking club, which has gained a lot of traction upon the students. Sadly, that means I've, I have to defend myself when it comes to food. But I did not despair as much. Oh. I wake up at the sound of my alarm, then begin my morning routine before I drop kicking my alarm clock out of my window. Again. <laughs> when I enter the kitchen, I make myself a bowl of cereal. Nikki's already left for school. Lately, she's been leaving early almost every day. It barely phases me anymore, especially after I found the cereal in the grocery store. The most expensive box of, box, box of tiger flakes I've ever bought. I'm finishing up breakfast, I hop on my bike and head to school. Valerie is already waiting for me and waves me over as soon as I enter the classroom. I have news for you. Good news or bad news? She pauses, then grins playfully. Come with me to the hangar after class and I'll show you. The hangar? So it's something to do with my core? What else would it be about? Nothing. I shrug. For the amount of time you spent researching my core, nothing I suppose. Don't worry. I'm taking good care of it. I should hope so. Valerie waits expectantly. So? So what? You haven't said yes yet. Will you come with me to the hangar? Yes, I'll go with you, my goodness. Good. I was starting to think maybe you didn't want to be alone with me. What? I, I, what? Before I can expand, expand? Respond. The professor raises her voice over the chatter. Good morning, everyone. In today's lesson, we will cover... That's all for today. Have a great rest of your day. Just as I finish packing up my things, Valerie grabs my hand and pulls me towards the door. Let's go! Very well! Away! Sure, just give me a bit- Oh, fuck. But she's already walking with me in tow. Hastily, I grab my bag. Or we can go now. We cut across the campus and enter the hangar through the main entrance instead of the pilot's lounge. Instead of the pilot's lounge, inside the hangar, Valerie rushes to Eagle's terminal, shooting impatient glasses at me as I follow behind. She sets herself in front of my terminal, and after typing in a sequence, she proudly points at the screen. Check it out. Stare silently. I stare at the continuous string of numbers on the screen. After a moment, Valerie waves her hand at my Hello? face. Anybody there? I snap back to reality. Bad. What are you doing? Just making sure you're still there. You spaced out on me. No, I was checking out the numbers. Pretty cool, right? I might be if I actually knew what it was. Well, you know how all the system scans we've been doing haven't shown anything new? Yes. Our approach was the mistake. I was thinking, if I wanted to leave a secret message on a system, I would embed it into existing code and spoof the service identity so that I would remain inconspicuous during scans. What? Well, I was doing a manual evaluation through listed services during the last week and noticed a discrepancy here. 
when I tried to execute it, it came back with this screen. Her voice grows, grows with excitement. I'm positive there's something behind this code. Hmm. Really? Then let's find out what it is. I was hoping you'd say that. Tell me how to decrypt it, and we'll find out in a second. Uh, wait, what? She raises an eyebrow. I... I wouldn't even know where to begin. Would you be able to hack it? Valerie bites her lip as she thinks. Yeah, but it might take a few days. That's probably still faster than it would take for me to figure it out. She grins. I won't argue with that. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. But only because you're cute. Uh. She winks at me, then turns towards the terminal. Thanks. Already engrossed in code, Valor gives me a short wave of dismissal. As I find my way out of the hangar, my phone dings with an email from the school administration. I scan through the contents. Huh. Due to the disqualification of Team Strike X, my team will now face the Ona Bugesha in this week's match. Huh. I wonder what Strike X did to get themselves disqualified. Hmm. My phone vibrates with a group chat from Sho. You guys get that email? I type out my, uh, my response. Yeah, wonder what Strike Team did. Oh, uh, X did. Probably lied about something important. That's the only one. That's the one reason why I left. Wait, Strike X was Sho and Kaori's old team? As I'm typing out a question for Sho to add about what happened with him and Strike X, a text from Mayu comes in. Looks like we'll go against Una Bogatia instead. Una Bogatia does sound familiar, but I can't recall what the, which team they are. Who are they again? A team we must demolish! Of course, Harry will write on all caps. Whoa, that's even more aggressive than usual. Shut up, show! Please don't be a. <clears throat> Please don't be a sep, Harry. I'm fine. Well, the ticks comes in, I wreck my brain trying to recall how I know that name. Oh, right! Never mind, they're all that. They're that old girls team, correct? Yeah. They're supposed to be pretty good. Who cares? I won't let them beat us. The text cease after that. Probably for the best. What do I feel like doing now? Hmm. Well, uh... Let's check up on Yuna. I feel like after that, well, brief mo mention of, uh... Of her being... The, the quote-unquote Misaki girl, I feel like I'm being left out on some intel here, so I I shall go and investigate. I was browsing a list of clubs and classes earlier, and Ace offers a cooking club. I remember Nikki mocking me, saying I should join when she first started her club, but perhaps that isn't such a bad idea. The look on her face would be priceless if I offered to cook, and it was edible. I'll go, I shall go check it out. Virginity, away! The cooking class is held currently in the culinary building. I enter the classroom filled with multiple cooking stations already set up with ingredients. It kind of reminds me of a chemistry lab, but it was stoves and ovens. In the corner of the room, I spot Yuna and claim the station beside her. Greetings, Yuna! She blinks in surprise. Well, I'm just dropping in today. Me too. What brings you here? I like to make a meal for my little sister, Nikki. And surprise the absolute shit out of her that I can actually cook by the power of my virginity. I can actually create something that is edible. Nikki? Oh, yeah, my younger sister. I didn't know you have a sister. Oh, did I not mention? Oh, yeah, I guess I did not mention that earlier. Well, she loves to cook, but I thought maybe I'd give her a break and make her something instead. Yuna smiles. You sound like a really thoughtful big brother. What about you? What brings you here? Since I quit the SBA, I've got a lot of extra time, so I've been trying out some of the other clubs Ace offers. Wait, wait when did you quit the SBA? Right around when I got Dachi as your sponsor. Her voice holds the edge of finality. It's clear she doesn't want to talk about this further. Well, anything catch your interest? A couple, but I'm still weighing my options. Besides, it's fun trying new things. The student and instructor arrives, and everyone breaks away from their stations to stand at their stations. Welcome, everyone. 
He goes into a short message explaining who he is and the rules and structure of the club. Now that that's out of the way, today we will be learning how to make Kasutera. If you haven't already done so, please put on your aprons. I slid off my blazer and tie the apron around my waist. First, we will preheat the oven to 160 degrees. And don't forget to line your pan with parchment paper. Isn't that a little low? Oh right, Celsius. For our dry ingredients, we will have one cup and two and a half tablespoons oh boy. <laughs> of flour and one cup of sugar. The wet ingredients will have six eggs and five tablespoons of honey diluted with two and a half tablespoons of water. Oh fuck. <laughs> At least there aren't that many ingredients as instructed. I measure out the ingredients. Wait, I forgot to preheat the oven. What was the temperature? 160! Here! For the power of my virgin instinct, I immediately grabbed the dial and spun it to 160 degrees. The instructor continues to provide instructions as I follow the best as I can. While whisking the eggs, my gaze wanders over to Yuna. She's carefully pouring flour into her measuring cup and leveling it up before dumping it in the bowl. Her tongue sticks out silent slightly as she concentrates. I try to hold back a chuckle <laughs> when she glances at me. There's a smudge on a, f a flower on her cheek, and she can't and I can't hold back my smile. She matches my grin before turning back to her ingredients. I refocus on my own station and add the sugar. The only thing left is to add the honey. Uh, how much water do I use that I load the honey? Uh, two and a half. Ha! I add two and a half teaspoons of water. Ha! I chuck. I take the spoon of water and chuck it towards my stirring bowl. <laughs> Once you add the last of your flour, mix the ingredients until combined. Be careful not to overmix. Pour the batter into your pan and let it bake for 35 minutes. Hmm. All right. As instructed, I asked the, I add the last of my flour, add the last of my flour to the mixture and continue the mixture. What counts as overmixing anyway? How do I know if I mix just the right amount or too much? Hmm. Using the power of my virgin instinct and my wooden spoon, I poke around to see if there are any flour chunks still left. Nope. I suppose that means my butter is ready to go in the oven. I set the timer for 35 minutes. Hurrah! Virgin instinct. Hurrah! I push the 35 minute dial. Or, or just type in 35 minutes. I don't know how what microwaves we're using. Or actually, we know we're using an oven. Whatever. <laughs> now, let's just wait around and see. Once my timer dings, I carefully remove my cake from the oven. It's baked uneven unevenly, so the sides is spilling over the pan. I think it might be a little darker on one side too. Does that mean it's burnt? I, I suppose it. I suppose uh, yeah, there's one way to find out. I pry it out of the pan and put it on my plate. Some of the edges got stuck to the parchment paper when I remove it, so there are patches of yellow exposed under the darkish brown layer. Yuna carefully sets her cake on her plate, a perfect loaf with a golden brown top and light yellow sides. I, she glances over at my cake and hides her smile with a cough. The instructor begins his taste test in my row at the back of the classroom. He reaches me before me before Yuna. Hmm. It didn't quite come out the way you expected, did it? But let's see how it tastes. He puts a fork full of cake in his mouth. He chews thoughtfully. Hmm. It's not quite right. There's something a little off about the taste and texture. Damn it. I must have gotten some of the measurements wrong. Perhaps next time I'll pay more attention to the recipe. Yuna smiles. Not bad for a first try. Hmm. It seems I need to refine my virgin instincts before I progress. The instructor stops at Yuna Station next. This is a beautiful cake. I can't wait to see how it tastes. Yuna's face lights up in anticipation as the instructor, ta instructor takes a bite. He pauses, straining to keep his face calm, then gulps heavily. How is it? His f her voice trembles with hope. The instructor's voice is hoarse as he chokes out the next his next words. Practice makes perfect. Wh what? What? Let me try. It can't be that bad. I take I take a bite. How is it? It's all. It's like a. Sh it's like if sugar and plaster had a baby together and let it sit out of the sun until the until the every last drop of moisture was baked out of it. Ah! <clears throat> uh, oh! Oh, it, uh, it, um, uh, well, <clears throat> at least you still got your looks. <clears throat> Excuse me? Oh, God, the cake! I meant, at least the cake looks delicious, even though it's not. Can it really be so bad? 
Yuna grabs her fork and stuffs a piece in her mouth. She grimaces, then slices deeply. Practice does make perfect. The instructor moves on to another station while Yuna pounces at her rejected cake. Well, aside from the result of your baking, what did you think of this class? It was fun, but surprisingly challenging. I find that to be the same. She glances at her cake again and mutters under her breath. Where did I go wrong? You're going to stick with this as your new extracurricular activity. I don't know. I want to keep checking out other clubs. Makes sense. It looks like other students are trying each other's cakes. You want to try some? Hell yeah, let's go. You and I, and I walked around the room and tried out some of the other cakes with varying results. One we, once we tasted all of them, we head out. In the, I'm in the pilot's lounge watching the Japan vs. China gear playoff match. The lounge is packed with students as this is a highly anticipated game. Many shot at the TV, but I watch in silence, sipping my drink and enjoying the ambience. Exciting game, right? <laughs> I glance up in surprise, but not. Akira grins and sits down in the seat across from me. Although he seems like a nice guy, we don't talk very often, so it's unusual he'd approach me. I suppose I do really have a good view of the TV, though. A string of boos and yells fills the room as China takes out one of Japan's gears. People are really getting into it this time. Yeah, it was predicted that this year China was going to be a strong opponent for Japan, and it looks like that's coming true. Is that why is there such a big turnout? I gesture to the crowded room. Akira nods. This is the first year that China's even made it this far in the playoffs. Everyone's watching to see who will come out on top. Who do you think will win? He doesn't even hesitate. Japan. What do you think? Japan. Definitely Japan. China might be catching up, but their technology hasn't reached the same innovative standards as Japan's. Plus, this year's lineup is completely new. Is a completely new team, so they don't have some the same player advantage as Japan's seasoned team. I agree. He gives me a long look. I wonder what he's thinking. Speaking of matches, I believe congratulations are in order for you and your team. Me? Well, your well, your team is still holding the number one spot on the leaderboards. Sure, but you guys are quickly catching up. You started out at rank 21, but you've already made it to rank 11. I dab in front of him, in front of everybody. <laughs> yes, it is kind of weird to think about it, and we're going against even an even better team this week, since Strike X got disqualified. Yeah, the school is taking no chances with them. What do you mean? Akira blinks. You didn't hear? No. The team lead and one of his starting pilots got into a huge fight, and they did not hold back. I mean, there were some serious injuries, so both members obviously couldn't compete. Well, shit. Why did they fight? The leader decided to sideline his starting pilot, and his pilot didn't like that. They're on the same team, couldn't they just talk it out? I'm pretty sure the, re the leader had a reason. Akira shrugged. I don't know all the details, but my guess is that there probably wasn't a good reason to sideline the pilot. Either way, because the fight escalated to the degree in which Ace had to get involved, the school is currently investigating the team. Well, that's fucking crazy, man. Yeah. Who are you going up against now? Onobu Geisha. Oh, Maze Team. Yes, I hear they're quite strong. Akira nods. They are. But so are you. In fact, I'm really looking forward to my match with you. Huh. Now, it might still be a while considering my team's rank, but when we do face off in battle, I will not hold back the power of my virginity. It has gotten stronger over the one month time skip. I can defeat you. Eventually, when that time comes, whenever that will be, or maybe not at all, depending on how this goes. Right, but you guys have been on a winning streak, haven't you? Yes. Because of that, your matchmaking rating, or MMR, is actually higher than your earned rank. That tends to happen with outliers like being an undefeated team. What he says makes most sense. Plus, I'm not going to question Akira about how being undefeated works. I have a feeling that if you beat Ona Bugeisha, it won't be long before we face each other on the field. I smile as I turn away, with my hair flowing in the air-conditioned wind, and I look back at him. We won't go easy on you. Don't get too comfortable in that number one spot. 
Akira merely smiles. And that is where I shall end the stream today. <laughs> well, hope you all enjoyed. As we leave on this one cliffhanger, even though it doesn't seem to be much of a cliffhanger. It, still, it was a good stream. Anyway, I bid you all farewell for the time being as I got dinner to eat.